Hello there, YouTubers, it's I, Omki or Excalibur here, bringing you the very first part of my uh, kind of retrospective of the X-Men cartoon series. Now, the first X-Men cartoon series I'm going to be talking about didn't actually air. It is a pilot episode that you know, only got a, a pilot episode that was never aired. I'm, of course, talking about the 19... The 1986 uh, X-Men uh, Pride of the X-Men cartoon. Now, there was a very popular video game during the 80s and 90s um, that we all remember. Especially if you if you grew up in, during this time period and spent all your times in the arcade, like I did, you remember you will know this game, the X-Men game, the X-Men arcade game. If you were, you know. The one where, you know, you fought Magneto and it had Nightcrawler and he had that crazy ass teleportation move that he zigzagged and killed everyone on screen. Well, this game was actually based upon this one pilot episode. And also, because of this one pilot episode, we actually got the X-Men series from the 90s, which, you know... All in all, if you think about it, I mean, this one pilot episode that went nowhere started so many wonderful things that I got to give it credit. And it's a really, really good episode. So, what happens in it? Well, we start off the very first episode with, uh, or <laughs> the episode, with a very 1980s slash early 90s um, Marvel cartoon tradition in which Stan Lee came in, uh, came in and introduced the cartoon and the, the characters kind of. And then we are introduced to Magneto. Magneto is being held by um, excuse me the US government. And you know this is the very first time in Marvel cartoon history we really get like racism. I mean like lots of it. Once again they're mutants and they're playing off, but I mean, nevertheless, I mean, it is racism. I mean, to quote the general from the episode, he's a lousy, stinking mutant. He shouldn't have the right to live with normal, decent human beings. That's a little unheard of uh, d during this time period, especially. I mean, that is just so blatantly out there. Now, Magneto, of course, escapes thanks to the help of the White, uh, the White Queen and um, gathers up his Brotherhood of Mutants. I'll get to them later. We then meet our, uh, our character, Kitty Pride, who is our window into the world of the X-Men. A lot of uh, the X-Men series actually use this, but I digress. So, Kitty Pride is introduced to the, the X-Men, which, if you remember the game, you, you'll probably know all the characters, but I'm going to list them here anyways. There is Dazzler, Cyclops, Wolverine, Colossus, Storm, and finally, Nightcrawler. And, oh, and of course, you know, Charles Xavier, but that kind of goes without saying. Anyways, so... They get a dis the X Men get a distress signal, saying that there is evil Brotherhood uh, activity. So they go off, and when the X Men leave, Magneto and the Juggernaut attack uh, the X Mansion, and everything is fine and dandy. But unfortunately, Kitty Pride does not have her uh, powers fully under her control yet. And if you know what her powers are. She phases through solid objects. She can walk right through them. But when she walks through electrical equipment, she always messes them up. <clears throat> excuse me. I have a bit of a sinus infection and whatnot, so <clears throat> please excuse. So when this happens, when she phases through the electronics, it causes the whole thing to go haywire. And then, you know. Juggernaut and Magneto just charge in and, you know, beat the ever-loving crap out of the X-Mansion. And Magneto gets Cerebros, which is what he needs so he can go and take 
use Cerebro, Cerebros to harness the power of the Scorpio Comet. Now, the Scorpio Comet is flying past Earth harmlessly, but Magneto makes it go so it will crash towards Earth to destroy the human race. Now, the, the only flaw that I have with Magneto's plan is the fact that he's going to destroy the Earth and everyone living on it. That includes any mutants that are living there. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Any case, so the X-Men go and they fight the Brotherhood, which the Brotherhood in this continuity consists of Magneto, the White Witch, the Blob, the, the Blob, the la la la, Pyro, Juggernaut, and Toad. Mm. So the yeah, X. So Storm, you know, has to go and keep the airlock nice and tight. So you know they don't, because when they they bust through asteroid M, they bust through it, and she has to stay out to keep you know the atmosphere okie dokie inside. So you know, like I said, they pair off. Blah 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 blah. At the very end, it's just Kitty Pride and a Nightcrawler facing off against Magneto. Now, they get Cerebros, and however, M Magneto sh was shooting a blast of his magnetism, and it destroyed one of the wires. And now, Cere now the comet can't be redirected until Nightcrawler teleported up, grabbed the broken wire, and turned into a living circuit. And then they redirect the, the Scorpio Comet right at Asteroid M. And Magneto says to Kitty Pride, is that, well, you might have stopped me, but you still lose because Nightcrawler has to stay here to keep the, the circuit going. So I lose, but Nightcrawler still has to die. I win, and he buggers off. So then you know they they get off nightcrawler nightcrawler teleports at the last second and that's the end of the episode and the end of the series sad i mean it was really sad i mean it, this was the first time that we really had a cartoon that really just was in your face racism which you know like i said before didn't happen before this time <coughs> it's a very good cartoon the voice acting is very great it has frank walker as um toad and several other characters. Though I had to say one thing that bugs the crap out of me with this series. Wolverine in the cartoon is Australian. And it's not like, oh, I'm guessing. No, no. He, with such lines as, don't worry about us, Dango. Do you know any Canadians that talk like that? Because I sure as hell don't. Anyways, <clears throat> Pride of the X-Men was a very good and very, very short-lived series. If you ever come across the, uh, the VHS, or if you can find it on DVD, or come across it online, I highly recommend watching it. It's very good. You will be very thankful that you watch it, and you'll wonder why this wasn't actually turned into a series. But, once again, I can't fully complain because we got the 90s X-Men cartoon out of it. Anyways, guys, this is Omki, or Excalibur, saying, take it easy. And if it's easy, take it twice. Later, guys. You know you loved it.